proudly we hail. city where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Today's warm and human narrative is unusual in many respects. It's the story of a boy who lived in a small town, yet it's about the Air Force. It's a tale of love and romance, yet there's much that's heroic in its telling. And finally, there's a parable, the story of a little man who was in reality a big man. Here then is today's play, Big Man. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first, Opportunity is a word that's been used in proclamations, campaigns, and slogans ever since the dawn of American independence. There's no hallow sign to its usage either, for this land of ours is truly blessed with more opportunities for success than any nation on earth. Today, your Air Force is offering ambitious young men greater opportunities for success than ever before. As an airman, you'll receive free specialized training in one of the hundreds of Air Force career assignments. And there are careers to suit every interest, such as communications, radar, air traffic control, and many, many others. As an airman, you'll wear the handsome blue Air Force uniform, and you'll serve in fascinating assignments at home and abroad. And you'll be a member of a wonderful organization that has won the respect and admiration of people everywhere. Yes, your United States Air Force is made up of outstanding young men who are going places in highly skilled, good-paying careers. Find out soon about your opportunities as an airman. Visit your nearest Air Force recruiting station at your earliest opportunity. And now we present the first act of Big Man. Tommy, if that's what you want to do, you just go ahead and do it. Oh, thanks, Dad. Getting into the Air Force means more to me than anything else in the world. I just hope they take you, son. I'm afraid you're a mite small for those big planes. Well, there are lots of things a little guy can do in the Air Force. They need mechanics to get into the nose of the plane, and they need... I the... know, I know, son, but the Air Force still has weight restrictions, and the men in the Miller family never had any heft to brag about. Not that we ever had to play second fiddle to anyone. You bet that. I told you that when you were a youngster, that you were always going to be small, but that was no reason to be little. There's a lot of difference between people being small and people being little. I know, Dad. Yeah. Come on inside. We'd best tell your mother. She's liable to be a bit upset, but don't let it bother you any. Mothers just have a habit of acting that way. Come on, Tommy. Oh, darn it, I just have to get around to oiling those porch chairs. Oh, I'll do it this afternoon. Ah, you're a good boy, Tommy. You'll make a fine airman. Thanks, Dad. Well, I thought you would never finish out there. What's the big secret? Ah, it's all been decided, Mildred, and nothing you say will change our minds. Huh, Tommy? That's right, Dad. Oh, you two sound like a couple of idiots. If you're talking about Tommy's joining the Air Force, well, that's something that was decided a long time before you two got around to jawing on the back porch. You must have been eavesdropping. Eavesdropping my foot. You think a mother doesn't know these things almost instinctively? Come on, eat. Supper's getting cold. No, wait a second, Mama. I don't understand. How did you know what we were deciding? Tommy, when you were three, a man flew over the house one day, skywriting. You looked up, and you asked me what he was doing. I told you it was hard for you to understand that there was a man up there in the blue sky flying a tiny plane and making that writing. Well, I don't remember that at all. Of course you don't. You're just a baby. Well, anyway, when the idea finally did get through to you, that was what you wanted to be, and there was no stopping you. You had your first kite when you were four, your first model plane when you were five, your first plane ride when you were seven. Oh, I remember that old single-engine job. 
I was a lot more scared than you were, Tommy. <laughs> well, that love of flying has always been so strong in you, I just made up my mind a long time ago to accept what would probably be an eventuality. I felt it growing in you since you graduated from high school last month. I just said to myself, Mildred, why fight it? <laughs> so God bless you. If you don't write me a letter at least once a week, I'll just come up to wherever you are and drag you back home by the scruff of the neck. Oh, now, Mom, don't cry. <laughs> Look, I'm not going yet. No, Mildred, stop your crying. You aren't going to help anything by all that weeping. I'm not crying. I've had something in my eye all afternoon. Yeah, I told you she'd be upset. I am not upset. Now, both of you, come on, eat before everything gets cold. <laughs> That's wonderful. You'll look simply super in that blue uniform. Oh, well, it's more than just a uniform, Sally. Oh, I know, silly, but, well, the uniform is a scrumptious one. Silly Sally Brown. <laughs> the cutest girl in town. Oh, I thought you'd forgotten that. You used to pull my ponytail and sing that. What made you remember? Well, when I told Mom about joining up tonight before supper, she was talking about the day I had my first plane ride. I don't think she ever found out that I had my first plane ride and my first kiss on the same day. Oh. Silly Sally Brown. Cutest girl in town. Oh, Tommy, I love you. Come on, let's get out of this creep joint. Take a walk down by the river. There's a big full moon tonight. Mm, and I'm the easiest girl in Parkersburg to convince. <laughs> Hi, Sally. Oh. Well, I see you're not particular who you go out with. Hi, Shorty. If you call me that once more, I'll tear you from limb to limb. Come on, Tommy. We'd better be going. Hey, run along, Shorty. Mama wants you. Sally, I I've got a cloud here. <laughs> Tommy, if you insist on brawling here in this public place, I'm going home by myself. I hear you're going into the Air Force. Since when are they accepting midgets? Huh? Come on outside. <laughs> What's outside, your gang? I said, come on outside. Tommy, I'm leaving now. And if I leave alone, that's the way things will stay. Alone. Oh, okay, Sally, I'm coming. I'm going to be back here in exactly one hour. You'll be here. Goodbye, Shorty. You mad at me? I'm furious. Well, you wouldn't want me to be a coward, would you? You're not a coward. Everybody knows that. Including Roger Benton? Including Roger Benton. He's just baiting you because he knows it makes you angry. Oh, I've tried to lay one on that guy for two years now. He's never given me the chance. I'll go back to the beanery. He won't be there. I wouldn't mind, but he always waits until I'm with you. Then he pulls something. Now, I'm going into the Air Force. I'll probably miss out on the chance. All the more reason for you to maintain self-control. Don't be mad at me, Sally. Oh, I'm not. Really, I'm not. It's just that, well, I feel insulted when you act that way with Roger. Insulted? Yes, Roger's asked me for dates dozens of times, and I've always turned him down. He knows that I think you're something special, and his way of striking back at me is by making you angry. I'm not so sure I follow all of that, but you're thinking I'm something special. I'm all for that. Um, will I see you tomorrow? Well, what makes you ask? Well, I don't know. Just the enlistment. I thought... Oh, Tommy. That's nothing, Sally. There's no reason to be upset. Well, I'm not upset, silly. You just told me that you loved me. I did? Yes. You forgot the Air Force for a moment. And if I can take your mind off that, even for a second, then I know you really love me. Come on, Dad. Hurry up, I'll be late. Oh, 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 Tommy, it's 5.30. It's an hour's drive to Warrentown, and the recruiting station doesn't open until 8. Well, Dad, you didn't have to get up and drive me. I wanted to take the bus. No, 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 no. I'll drive you, son. We'll get there in plenty of time. Uh, where's your mother? Well, she cooked me some breakfast, said goodbye, and went back to bed about an hour ago. Come on, Dad, hurry up. Next. Yes, Sergeant. First of all, take off your shoes and step up here on this scale. Uh, shouldn't I be examined first? 
In due time, my boy. Let's see how much you weigh first. All right. I said take off your shoes. Yeah, that's fine. Now, up on the scale. You know, the men in our family never had any heft to brag about, but that doesn't mean that we can't do anything that, that anyone else can do. Mm -hmm. I thought so. It's not enough? Not enough, son. You weigh just exactly eight ounces over 100 pounds. The weight minimum for the Air Force is 105 pounds. I guess that's all, then. Slip on your shoes. Come into my office and let me talk to you a minute. Yeah, right in here. Sit down. Smoke? No, no, I don't. Uh, I just got a minute or two for a quick cigarette. Miller, just how badly do you want the Air Force? More than anything else in the world. You a big eater? I'm serious. How's your appetite? Mom says I eat more than any other two people she knows. I can't understand why I don't put on weight. Well, there's nothing in the world you can't have if you really want it. And you're not striving for the impossible. Four and a half pounds, uh, that's less than a small sack of flour. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to take your enlistment papers and put them right here in my drawer. You come back in about two months and let me put you on that scale again. You mean it? I certainly do. We can always use a young fellow with lots of spunk, and this is one way of proving it. You just watch me. I'm going to eat everything I can lay my eyes on. That's the spirit. Uh, okay, Miller. See you in about two months. It's a bet. In two months. Tommy! Hi, Sally. Well, Tommy, I, I, I thought... They didn't take me. Oh, oh, Tommy, I'm so sorry. Well, gee, just don't stand there. Come on in. Is anyone home? Mom and Dad went to the movies. Gee, I... I never thought you'd take it this hard. Why, you're practically green. Have you been home yet? No, no, I haven't. I, I, I didn't feel too well. It was closer to come here than go home. Well, Tommy, is anything the matter? Well, nothing can be that important. Not even the Air Force. It's not the Air Force. Well, then what's the matter? You look positively ill. Well, I... I'm underweight. Five pounds, I have to eat. I have to get fat. Tommy, Tommy, what's the matter? I ate too much. I feel sick, very sick. Oh, Tommy. are listening to the proudly we hail production, Big Man, and we will return to our second act in just one moment. But first, you know, it's often been said that to speak in terms of a man's interest is to win that man as your friend. Well, that's what the friendly people at the Air Force recruiting stations all over the country are doing every day. They're telling hundreds of career-minded young men about the outstanding opportunities available in the United States Air Force. They're describing career opportunities that suit every young man's interests and aptitudes. For example, well, if you're an amateur photographer, you can turn your basic knowledge into a colorful and highly interesting career by taking advantage of the free training available in the Air Force Photography School. It's the world's finest. Then, on the other hand, maybe you're interested in the new field of guided missiles and rocket propulsion. Well, here, too, you can get free training that qualifies you as one of the best military technicians in the world. Whatever your interests, your Air Force has a job for you. So visit your nearest Air Force recruiting station at your earliest opportunity and find out how you may become an airman in the United States Air Force. It's the career opportunity of a lifetime. You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Big Man, and we return to our second act. Tommy, Sally was right. You deserved exactly what you got last night. But I didn't eat that much. Oh, 
If you consumed half of what you told me you ate, it was enough to feed a whole bomber crew, let alone one poor little prospective airman. Uh, let the boy alone, Mildred. He feels badly enough as it is. I've never stood in the way of anything Tommy wanted to do before. Can't see why it would make any difference now. I've fattened up skinny Millers before. Oh, Ma, I couldn't eat a thing. Oh, you'll be hungry again. Don't you worry. But this time, let's try not to do it all in one day. And let's see Dr. Parker about it, too. I think your mother's right, Tommy. Aren't I always? Okay, Mom, you're the boss. Well, then, now here's the plan of action. You've got two months. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He's holding my enlistment papers in his drawer. In two months, I've got to pick up five pounds, and then I can be accepted. That shouldn't be too hard if you're willing to do as I say. Okay, Mom, you're the boss. Tomorrow... Well, Tommy, Dr. Parker gave you a clean bill of health. All we have to do is follow his prescribed diet. Watch calories in reverse. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's that you're making, Ma? That's a B-36. B-36? A jet-propelled concoction of my own. What's in it? Milk, chocolate, ice cream, wheat germ, vitamin supplement, all whipped together with an egg in it. Mom, no! Go ahead, drink it. It's worth at least a pound. Okay, here I go. Down the hatch. Mom, I, I can't finish all of this. All right, then. You don't have to. But make sure you finish those mashed potatoes. What's so special about the potatoes? They've got hidden values. I made them with wheat germ, vitamin supplement, and whipped in an egg. Why did you let me sleep so late? All part of the plan. Be sure you put lots of heavy cream and sugar on that oatmeal. I know. Don't complain. I want you to finish it. I made it with wheat germ, vitamin supplement, I and... know. I know. Don't tell me. You whipped an egg in it. Sally, I, I don't know how much more I can stand of this. Oh, Tommy, it sounds awful. I got on the scale this morning. Two weeks to the day since I started, I'd only gained three pounds. Well, you don't have much more to go. Only two more pounds. Gee, you should be able to do that easy. Did you say easy? I'm beginning to feel like a walking health food shop. Did you ever taste wheat germ? Mm, Mom used to put it in our meatloaf. Said it was good for us. More children in this country learn bad eating habits because of things that were good for them. I'm sorry, Tommy. Oh, I gotta go. It's almost 10 o'clock. The eating part of this I can understand, but why the early bedtime? Oh, Mom insists. And I've gone along with it this far. Besides, it's only two more weeks. I wouldn't mind being an Air Force widow if you were only in the Air Force. Oh, it won't be much longer, Sally. It can't be. Okay, then. Come on. I'll walk you home. Hi, Sally. Hi, Reject. Let's go, Sally. Hey, where are you running, fly boy? You've got no place to go since they clipped your wings. Oh, Roger Benton, why don't you be quiet? Now, now, Sally, stop fighting Shorty's battles. Oh. Say that once more. What? Shorty? That's it. Tommy? You step outside. You're getting in here. Now, you wouldn't hit me, Shorty. You haven't got the guts. All right, you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, now. Now, what's my name? What's my name? Tommy. Tommy what? Tommy Miller. All right, now. Sally, I have to get home, go to bed. Can I walk you home first? Yes. Yes, Tommy, of course. Tommy, I'm sorry. You're sorry? Gee, I thought you'd be furious with me. He deserved it, every second of it. Here, take my scarf and wrap it around your neck. You're overheated and you'll catch your death of cold. Stop babying me. That's the main reason I bopped Roger. 
Because a man's small is no reason for anyone to think he's little. I'm quite able to take care of myself. I know you are, Tommy. You're wonderful. Oh, I'm not wonderful. I'm just me and myself, Tommy. Well, Tommy, what's the matter? Uh, I wish I knew, Sally. This weight thing has got me down. Oh, not now, Tommy. Not when you've been doing so well. Well, it's what you wanted more than anything. And if a person's willing to work for what he wants, nothing can stop him. I've always believed that this isn't work. It's torture. Oh, it'll be over before you know it. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. It'll be over and I'll still be a civilian. Well, thanks for walking me home. Do you want to come in for a minute? No, no, I better be getting home. Curfew has run. Well, wouldn't you like to kiss me? I'm sure that wouldn't do any harm to your diet. I guess I deserve that. You deserve that, too. Now get on home. Things are bound to get better. I can't get any worse. Good night, Tommy. Good night, Sally. up on the scale first. Okay. Without your shoes. I forgot. That can't be right. Step off again. Now step on. You've lost two pounds. Mom, no! Oh, it must have been the fight last night. What fight? I finally gave Roger Benton what he deserved. No wonder your shirt was soaked this morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. What now? It's up to you, Tommy. I've been driving you hard on this thing because I thought it was something you really wanted. Now for a silly fight. It wasn't a silly fight. I had to. All right. Are you willing to start all over again? Give it another try? The whole business, Mom? The wheat germ and all? It's your decision to make. Mom, I'm going to get into that Air Force or burst in the attempt. to let my belt out another notch. Yeah, well, don't make yourself sick again. Oh, don't worry, I won't this time. Did you get on the scale? You bet. Picked up those two pounds I lost, plus one more. Oh, that's fine, Tommy, that's fine. Drink some milk with those bananas, Tommy. They'll go down easier. I uh, picked up another pound today. That's fine, Tommy. I think we're going to do it, Mom. I think we're going to do it. Miss Sally? Oh, I, I know it's only 8.30, but I just can't. Tomorrow's the big day. I have to be at the recruiting office bright and early. Oh, no, 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 Dad's not taking me. I'm going over on the bus by myself. Oh, I haven't weighed myself since this morning. Yeah, I was okay then. Yeah, uh, just 105. The scale kept tipping back and forth. No, 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 I can't, Sally. Honest, I can't. Roger. Roger Barton, what are you doing here? Hi, Tommy. I guess I'm going to join the Air Force. Like you. Oh, <laughs> I'll be. Yeah, I've been thinking about it ever since that night at the beanery when you, uh... <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, you kept asking for it. I, I really didn't mean to. Oh, don't apologize. I deserved what I got. But I kept thinking about it after that. And, you know, I decided I wanted to be in the same service you were in. The Air Force. Oh, I'm not even sure they'll let me in. Oh, here. You want a banana? No, no, thanks. You go ahead, though. 
Oh, yeah, I will. I think I'm going to make it. But I just can't take any chances. Just can't. All right, you men, step right in. Well, Miller, you're back. And yeah, those two months went by quickly, eh? The longest two months in the history of time. <laughs> well, you've obviously done it or you wouldn't be back here. I don't know, Sergeant. Have I done it? Well, come on in here. Let's weigh you in first. Uh, will the rest of you hold it up for a few moments? Yes, sir. Good luck, Tommy. Well, I don't need luck now. Uh, Sergeant, would you mind if I had another banana? <laughs> no, no. You go right ahead. Well, put your things on the chair there, Miller, and take off your shoes. Okay. Okay, Miller. Now, up on the scale. Well, Sergeant? Miller, are you playing a joke with me? Sergeant, what's the matter? Miller, you weigh less than you did the last time you were in. Less? That's impossible. I, I weighed myself... Wait, 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 hold it a second. Step back up there. You know, I didn't have the crossbar adjusted right... Now? Okay, step down. You weigh 108 pounds. You mean... That's all? I made it? With three pounds to spare. Now, now wait out there with the rest of the men. You ought to be in the Air Force by the end of the day. Well, oh, oh, tell me, how'd you do? Did you, did you make it? Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot my bag of bananas in there. Do you still need them? No. No, I guess I don't. Then you're going to get in, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess I am. In the Air Force. I made it, Sally. I made it. You did? Oh. In a minute or two, I'll be an airman. Oh, that's terrific. And to do it took a... A big man. Today, the men of your Air Force are soaring to new heights as they blaze a trail of air progress across the skies. And now is the time for you to join them and become an airman with a highly specialized career. As a member of this aerial defense team, you'll be entering a whole new world, a world of the future that offers free training in such fascinating careers as guided missiles and photography, radar, and, well, gee, a host of others. You'll wear the handsome blue Air Force uniform, a uniform that gains respect and admiration wherever you go. So for a wonderful future with good pay, liberal allowances, and truly one of the world's finest careers, you become an airman in the United States Air Force. Talk it over with the friendly people at your local Air Force recruiting station. <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Dick Herbert speaking, and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>